What's up guys, Dog Polk here and we're back for another episode of Poker Hands and today we're going to be taking a look at another hand from the Poker Stars big game between Vanessa Russo and Tony G. Just don't get out of hand. Out of you wouldn't play this hand, it's too good for you. He's also getting a bit of a reputation for being a talker at the table. I don't want to be predictable here. Oh, look at this Vanessa, it's me and you. I got to raise yeah, it, no. 1,200. When is it high, it wasn't called predictable. I have many things. So if you re-raise, then you build the pot so big, and then you're going to get bluffed out in a big pot. Oh, boy. Vanessa's got pocket rockets. Uh, I'd say it's the perfect time to listen to Tony and re-raise. <laughs> Just call it. Keep the pot slow. In classic poker hands form, our hand kicks off with a little bit of questionable pre-flop play with the action folding the button, Peter Jensen with 9-8 off, who decides to fold? And in general, you want to be opening this hand, especially in a game that has antes. You should almost always be opening. This was very nitty, especially in the two players that are, you know, not going to be that active here. Tony G might be a little bit looser, raising the small blind, and Russo probably not the most aggressive player. Anyway, after he folds, Tony G decides to raise up with 6-5 off, which is basically saying, hey, Vanessa, I think you're not going to defend enough so where I can raise really bad hands. And that can be okay against some tighter players, but you're not going to want to make this move against good players in the big blind because they're going to defend getting such good odds, and then you're going to get outmaneuvered post-flop. Now Vanessa looks down at pocket aces and has a mandatory 3-bet. She's up against a small blind open range, tons of hands there, a lot of hands that she can get value from, but then also when you're in the big blind in this spot, as a general strategy, you want to 3-bet a lot. The small blind is going to be out of position for the entire hand, so by 3-betting aggressively here, you put them in d difficult situations, and they can't really play too wide versus the 3-bet, because if they do, they're out of position, but if they play too tight versus the 3-bet, then you can profit by 3-betting them with nothing, so you want to have an aggressive 3-betting strategy to put them in a tough spot. Anyway, she decides to go for the flat call. Let's take a flop. I bet 2,000. That's fair, you know. I, I, thought, I think it's better than betting in the dark. Tony bets in the dark and flops two pair. A dark raise, that, that's hard in commitment to the game. OM Tony G. Karma has left the building. I think we're about to see two people committed to this pot. Vanessa raises to 5,000. I want to raise it again. Tony re raises to 20 grand. You can get it all in. Tony G sounding very confident. You ready? <laughs> Tony G is capable of this song and dance, whether he's strong or bluffing. Vanessa is going to have a hard time getting away from this one. You ready? If you win the hand, you keep me quiet. <laughs> <laughs> Don't believe you. That bluff I'll call. That bluff I'll call. Tony just added unspeakable equity to this pot. Vanessa calls. Tony D decides to go ahead and blind bet the flop, also bad, particularly out of position. You want to be chugging more hands to your opponent because they have an advantage. He manages to blind bet his way into bottom two, though, and all of a sudden it looks pretty good. If he had had a decision to better check, definitely a hand you'd want to be betting. Vanessa now decides to raise pocket aces, and I like this play. You're, you're up against a small blind raise range to bet dark. You're so far ahead of that when you do have aces, you want to raise to try and get some value. Back over to Tony G, and now he has to be thrilled with the development of things. He has a ridiculously strong hand after opening garbage and betting blind. So he decides to 3-bet the flop, and I like that play. He decides to go 20,000, which is a little on the big side, I think. You know, the raise was to 5,000. I probably would have preferred to see something in more of the 15 to 17,000 type range, because when you start to go this big, bluffing gets to be very expensive when your opponent has good hands. And Vanessa definitely can have some good hands here. Now back over to Vanessa, Aces is in a pretty dicey situation. If she decides to call, and really I don't think she wants to raise because what does that accomplish, but if she decides to call, she's going to have to look to call some later streets as well because Aces is not going to improve very often and it's a very strong hand within her range. It's pretty reasonable in the spot to be raising with hands like a jack when somebody bets blind given how wide their range is going into that situation. So with Aces, I think you really have nothing you can do here except call and pray that things are going to work out. An ace on the turn. Russo has top set. Hello, nasty. As Tony G would say, ace from space, and Vanessa has gone from zero to hero. Tony G does have a flush draw. 10,000. And bets 10,000. You could shut me right up. How? 
Well, by taking, being, being all in on winning the pot. <laughs> Punch in the face. Can I just push a button? <laughs> that ace dramatically improves Vanessa's hand, but if she put Tony on spades, he just got there. She just calls. The turn is the ace of spades, and man, that's crazy. I fucking beast high stakes. I beast everything I play. The only thing I don't beast is stars cash games. Fucking rigged as shit. Okay, now that is also crazy. That guy's retarded, yeah? Throughout the hand, throughout the hand, he, he's saying shit like, oh, 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 like, damn, this bro seems real mad. Why is this guy so angry? <laughs> Eight hundred K. Must have been a nice house. Let's see. Hot tub. It's quite the backyard. I fucking beast high stakes. I beast everything. Anyway, the turn is the ace of spades, which is an interesting card. Tony G has to be a little worried now because the flush gets there, and there are a couple other hands like Ace Jack that possibly could have gotten there. But I wouldn't be too worried about hands like that because in general they should be three betting pre flop. If Vanessa's moving to the lead, she probably has a flush. And that's not too scary, but certainly a hand that Vanessa could raise the flop and call a three bet. Now, he decides to go ahead and bet a very small amount here. He bets $10,000 into a pot of already $40,000, and I can't advise that. I think he should check his hand and play for a check call. His hand's going to play pretty well across a decent amount of rivers, unless it's an ace or a jack. But other than that, he's going to have two pair at least. He can river a flush, he can river a boat. He's got a hand that makes a very nice check call hand on the turn. When he bets this small amount, he puts himself in a weird spot if he gets raised because now if he's up against a flush, he's not going to really have the outs to try and hit a boat and she won't have as many bluffs than if he just checks and she maybe can take a stab if she did decide to float with a hand like 8-7 for an open ender. Now, he does bet 10,000 and now Vanessa's in kind of a weird spot too. I don't really hate either raising or calling here. I think it's kind of unlikely Tony G has a flush very often. I think those hands are a little more likely to call the flop raise, although it certainly is possible he puts some of those into the re-raise as well. Now with aces, the reason I kind of like raising is because you do not block any of the strong hands that Tony G could have had in the flop, which is good for you. And also you don't really want the river to come a spade because then your hand value goes down dramatically. So those are both pretty good reasons to raise, but you might want to call if you think Tony G is either bluffing or will put more money in on the river on certain runouts. So I can see some merit both ways, but I do lean a bit towards raising. Anyway, Vanessa decides to go ahead and call and let's take a river. I check. Tony checks in the dark. The river, a sick card, the five of hearts. <laughs> now you gotta show some, some guts. <laughs> can you bet this or are you gonna make a really weak check now on, on the end? Go on, Vanessa, you can do it. For Vanessa, best card ever, full house over full house. The river comes in offsuit five, which is a disaster for Tony G. While he's improved to a boat, Vanessa has improved to a higher boat, and he's 100% gonna get stacked. The question is what's the best way to do it? Should he jam himself, or should he check to induce? Personally, I lean a little bit more towards betting. He bet in the turn to rep represent a good hand, and now he has a chance to try and win all of Vanessa's chips. Also, I think it's a lot more likely Vanessa has a hand like a jack that raised the flop for value and decided to call 3-bet than most other hands. You know, she's really never going to have aces even though she has it here because that hand should 3-bet pre-flop. So in general, she's going to have a hand that doesn't have that much showdown value and is probably not going to float a straight draw on both flop and turn unless she had maybe a hand like 8-7 with a spade. But in general, she's not going to have that much besides a jack. So I think when your opponent mainly has a hand that's kind of in the middle part of their range and you either have a bluff or a strong hand, you usually want to bet yourself to take advantage of that. Over to Vanessa and it's starting to look like she's got a pretty good chance to shut up Tony G. All in. Cool. Ace is full. Wow, very nice. That's the best. Very nice. You got screwed? I got a full house too on the end. Wow. And a flush draw. That's it. That shut me up. Thanks for stopping by today for Poker Hands. I want to remind you to subscribe to the channel, and we are going to be taking tomorrow off, so I'll see you guys on Monday. I sold my house to get back in action.